cubic function. Okay, so what is a cubic function? A cubic function is the one that we've learned now in grade 12. So that's a cubic graph. They tell us that um, it's got all of these interesting properties. Okay, now I want to go through those properties one by one with you guys so that you can have a very good understanding of what's going on here. They're telling us that f of zero is eight. Now, what does this normally say? It would normally say f of x, okay, is equal to something. So what I want you to understand is that what this, what this statement over here is telling us is that when x is 0, then y is 8. Did someone just say y-intercept? Exactly. That is the y-intercept. When x is 0, then y is 8. So therefore, that is your y-intercept. Okay, next one, when f of four is equal to f of one equals to zero. Some students don't like it when they write it like this. So what you can do if you want, you can think of this like this instead. You can think of it like that rather. So what are they saying here? When x is four, then y is zero. That is an x-intercept. When y is zero, we call that an x-intercept. And this is also an x-intercept. When x is equal to, when x is equal to um, one, then y is zero. That's another x-intercept. Now, immediately, I become a little bit concerned when I see that because I know that a cubic graph is supposed to have three x-intercepts, one, two, three. However, they are only giving me two. What that could mean is that they are, are they they on purpose they they purposefully for not giving me the third one or and the more common reason is that one of those x intercepts is also a turning point, a repeating x intercept is a turning point. So I've got a suspicion that one of these x values is also a turning point because there should be three x intercepts, but they're only giving me two. So something fishy is happening there, but we'll find out soon. Okay, here we go. Now they're telling us this piece of information over here. So what does that mean? They're saying that um, f first derivative, remember that that little line means first derivative. What does derivative mean? gradient. Well done if you know that. It's the gradient of a graph. So what they're telling us here in a weird kind of way is that when x is 3, the gradient is 0. Did someone just say turning point? Isn't it a turning point when the gradient is 0? Like if I have a graph like this, it's at the turning points where the gradient is zero. So this is just a fancy way of them trying to tell us that there is a turning point. Why can't they just say it? <laughs> but yeah, that's a turning point, okay? And so let's quickly fill in the last one. When x is one, then the gradient is also zero. So these things here are the turning points. See how they're just using mathematics to tell us y-intercept, x-intercept, turning point. And then what's this other thing over here? Oh, well, they're just telling us that when f... Okay, so now they're saying... So they're saying when x is 3, which is also at the turning point, by the way, because we saw it over there. So when x is 3, the y is equal to 8. So they're just actually giving us the y value of the turning point. So this is the y value of your turning point. You see, guys, how awesome is that? And so now they say sketch the graph clearly indicating the turning points and the points of intersection with the axes, with the, um, you know, with the axes. So now we can draw this graph. So they tell us that the y-intercept is 8. So we can put that in as 0 and 8. Then they tell us that the two x-intercepts are at 4, also at when x is 1. Um, now, at 3 and 8, and 8. Okay, so that's, your, that's another little turning point. And, so, and then remember, we said that um, 
the other turning point is at x equals to one. So if you look carefully, this graph obviously has to do something like this. It's going to go like this. It's going to turn, turn, and then through. Bam, there we go. So, and look at that. We said that when there is, a t when there is an x intercept that is repeating, then that will be a turning point as well. Okay, and so that is what that graph would look like. Okay, same same question actually. Uh, I'm actually glad we're doing this question. Awesome. So let me show you how this works. So let's just quickly summarize what we already learned in the previous part of this question. We already learned that the x intercepts are at um, x equals to one, but I'm going to say x equals to one again. Why? Because when there's a turning point, we can say that the x-intercept repeats. And the other x-intercept was at 4. OK. Um, now, I wonder if this is going to work. I've got a little hack that we can do this question very easily. And if we don't get to this answer, it means that the person who designed this question has not designed it properly, um, correctly, because we don't need any other information. I mean, we could maybe use that if we wanted to. Let's see, let's see how it goes. So you, you should know by now that if you have a parabola, for example, if you have a parabola and you know that the x-intercepts are four and minus one, you should be very comfortable with the idea that to find the equation of the parabola, you could use brackets, right? You could say like x minus four and x plus one. You can do that, but you must just always remember that there's an A um, in the front. You always have to remember that there could be an A. So what I'm thinking is that they've given us the three X intercepts. What some students might not have realized is that when there's a turning point at an X intercept, you can repeat it. Ah, so what we can do now, because it's a cubic graph, it's got three X intercepts. So we go like this. And we can say X minus one and another X minus one and then an X minus four. Awesome, hey? And then you must always have that little A in the front. What we then do to find A is you substitute another point that you haven't yet used. And you can use whatever you like. Um, you could use this one, or you could use this one. I'm going to use this one, 8 and 0. like that. We then, um, you can just multiply these three numbers together, minus one times minus one times minus four, and that'll give us minus four. So we can say minus four A. Then we can get A alone as minus two. Ha ha, check that out, minus two. And so all that you do now is you can say that Y is equal to minus two, so I'm plugging it back into this equation now. And then I can go x minus 1, x minus 1, and x minus 4. I would then need to multiply all of this together and hope that this is what we get to. I'm just joking when I say hope. We are going to get to that. OK, so we can go minus 2. And then I'm just going to multiply the first two brackets together. And that should give us x squared minus 2x plus 1. And then we can multiply the last two brackets together. And that should give us x cubed minus 4x squared minus 2x squared plus 8x plus x minus 4. I'm then going to simplify the inside of that bracket first. So x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x minus 4. I then multiply the minus 2 in. And I get minus 2x cubed plus 12x squared minus 18x plus 8, which is exactly what they asked us to get. OK, so point is, if you have to work out the equation of a cubic graph and you have the x-intercepts, then you literally just make three brackets. OK, so for this question, very easy question, um, they say, determine the values of x for which the graph is concave down. Now, remember. We've spoken about concave down in detail, and we also have videos on that on the course, concave up, concave down, what that actually means. But in a quick summary, um, if you have a cubic graph, okay, 
um, this area here, can you see that it's like a sad face there? You can imagine there's a sad face. Um, see the sad face? When you see the sad face, that means concave down. A lot of students call that concave up because they see this part as pointing up. I, I understand. But when it's a sad face, that's actually called concave down. And mathematically, it is where your second derivative is smaller than zero. It's where your second derivative is negative. And that makes sense. If you're sad, you're negative. OK, you're feeling negative. Now, all of a sudden, this graph seems to be smiling now. Can you see the smiley face over there? There's a smiley face. And so when you are smiling, you are positive. You're feeling positive. And mathematically, that is called concave up. And it is where your second derivative is positive because you're happy. Um, like that. Out of your own, for your own interest, the place where it changes from happy to sad or sad to happy, that is called the inflection point. And to find that point, you obviously just make the second derivative, not negative, because that's concave down, not positive, because that's concave up, but zero, because I'm not happy or sad. So it's just zero, neutral. That is how you find your inflection point. Okay, so moving on. They say, determine the x value where the graph is concave down. So it's the second derivative must be um, negative, because it's down. So I take my first derivative. And then I just repeat the, repeat the process um, for the second derivative. Like that. And then I know that to make it concave down, my second derivative must be smaller than 0. So I can go minus 12x plus 24 must be smaller than 0. And now I'm just going to take this x over to the other side. And so what I find if I solve is that x must be greater than 2. x is greater than 2. 